When going on a road trip in the old days, before we had GPS and Google Maps, that is, the most important tool of any family navigator was their trusty multi-folding road map. Wrestling with one of these in the confined space of a car was no easy task, while you stressed out about how not to miss your turn off and figure out which way is up. Did you notice all the different coloured roads? The red major roads, the yellow minor roads, and the big blue highways? Don't you think it looks somewhat familiar to what we see in our anatomy textbooks? Red arteries, yellow nerves, and blue veins. These structures are found throughout the body and they supply it with oxygenated blood, innovation, and take deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Collectively, they're known as the neurovasculature. And in today's tutorial, we will focus on the neurovasculature of the shoulder and the arm. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a quick overview of what we're going to talk about in this tutorial. In our image here, the musculature has been dissected away so that we can see the bones of the shoulder joint and the surrounding neurovasculature from an anterior perspective. This illustration will feature heavily throughout our tutorial as we discuss the arteries, the veins, and nerves of the shoulder and the arm. And finally, we'll conclude our tutorial with some clinical notes. Without further ado, let's get started with the arteries of the shoulder and the arm. In order to orientate ourselves, we're going to start at the beginning. The arterial supply to the shoulder and arm originates in the chest as the subclavian artery. You'll notice that we've removed the veins and nerves from our illustration so that we can see this vessel more clearly. If we zoom out and look at the bigger picture, we can see that the right subclavian arises from the brachiocephalic trunk, and the left subclavian arises directly from the aortic arch. OK, so let's go back to our previous image. From its origin, the subclavian artery travels laterally, passing between the anterior and middle scalene muscles. Along its course, the subclavian artery gives off various branches, but today we will only focus on the branches that supply the shoulder and the arm. The thyrocervical trunk arises from the subclavian artery, and the reason we're mentioning it is because it gives rise to the suprascapular artery. The suprascapular artery supplies the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, which are muscles of the rotator cuff. When the subclavian artery crosses the lateral border of the first rib, it becomes the axillary artery. So the axillary artery is a continuation of the subclavian artery. Along its course, this artery gives off various branches, including the superior thoracic artery, the thoracoacromial artery, the lateral thoracic artery, the subscapular artery, the anterior circumflex humeral artery, and the posterior circumflex humeral artery. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.